Having a good digital market procedure has become critically important for all engineers, especially with that move from working in the digital space more often. So now is super critical that you have that good workflow. So we're going through my workflow, effectively leverage the power of Bluebeam to improve my market procedure. So what makes a good markup procedure? A good market procedure requires three things. It needs to be quick to use, effective at communicating your markup, and have some quality assurance to ensure you're wrapping that all up. And without those three things, it's likely not to meet all the goals of what you require. If it's not quick to use, people are likely not going to use it, as I find it more laborious not go through the whole task of doing that markups. If you can't effectively communicate what you need to do, again, it's hard to use, so people are likely not going to want to use it as well. It will also slow it down between those markups backwards and forwards. And you will need that quality assurance as well to close up the company requirements to ensure that all the markups are done. So any procedure you put into place, make sure you've got those three things involved. What is the current traditional markup procedure? Well, it's known as the red pen markup where engineers essentially mark up in red pen on the drawings about what they want changed and give it to the draft person. And essentially that same mentality has been moved into Bluebeam, where they mark up on red on the drawings and hand it off. But however, this severely limits the power that you can utilize with Bluebeam. Effective communication, as I stated earlier, is important for all markups. And this is something you can leverage regardless of whether you're working in that digital space or still in that traditional pen markups. And that is leveraging the power of color. So you can have different colors assigning to different things. So yes, you'll still have your red pen markup, essentially, where you're marking up the exact changes you need. However, you can utilize different colors. So you can have green, where you've got a question where they may need to go to the architectural drawings, find something and make something align, make something match, where you have some questions about what's in the architectural model. This is where you can leverage a color such as green, where you can have those additional questions, or they need to look at the drawings and make it match something else. As the red pen would be the exact change that you need on the drawing, a green comment essentially needs additional forethought, as they may need to go into the model to check what you needed to do there. And also, as any market procedure is a back and forth workflow. So sometimes an engineer may mark up something, but then you may need to be some reason about why you can't do that. The architect has changed something. This is where you can utilize a different color such as blue, where a drafter or modeler can put comments back on those markups saying, I haven't done it for certain reasons. So as you can see here, you can utilize the power of color for having workflow back and forwards. So when someone's looking at a drawing, they can quickly see why things haven't been done and have questions and also work out that additional information they need out of that workflow. This can also flow onto that QA procedure where essentially when the drafter is doing his drawings, he highlights it in yellow, crosses it off to ensure that it's been done. And then you can have the additional cross check. We have a different highlighter that highlights over each of those markups. So you got that double check to ensure everything has been proceeded. So you're meeting two requirements you've both got something that transfers the information quickly and effectively and closing out that QA procedure by adding some color into your markup. But with Bluebeam, you can move this even further where you can define the categories even more as you have that more variety in colors that you can play with. And you also have the power of a thing called a tool chest. As you can see up on the screen, you can create your own unique tool chest. We have different markup procedures have different comments in it. This also allows you for a tracking procedure as well. So by making a tool chest out of your marker procedure, you can make this marker procedure even more powerful and gives you some tracking features as well. So let's move into Bluebeam and look at how it can be used. Now let's just open Bluebeam and play around with this generic markup to see how it actually works. As you can see, I've highlighted our tool chest that's already set up. And the top of the page, you can also see a thing called My Tools. So what we're able to do is click and drag our generic markup items into our My Tools and essentially customize it for whatever we need. So depending on the, what the markups are, who we are and how we're utilizing it, this can be either 
on a project by project basis or even a computer by computer basis. So you can really set it up depending on what you're doing for the day. So it's fully customizable depending on what you're trying to answer. There's either two ways we can utilize this. You can either click on them and by clicking on them, essentially it allows us to grab that markup tool that we're using. However, this can be quite slow and cumbersome and there is a better way. And when we're looking at efficiencies, we have to go no further than looking at pro gamers. So when they're setting up their design for their how they're going to be efficient as possible, they're heavily utilizing keyboard shortcuts. There's very minimal mouse movement. Most of the action is on the keyboard to improve their efficiencies. We too can utilize this to power our blue beam. If we look back up the My Tool Chest, there's a series of numbers up there. This effectively gives us shortcut keys that we can utilize when doing our markups. So essentially by hitting the number three, it allows us to grab that tool in the tool chest. So as you can see here, we've grabbed number three, and we're saying, let's change this to two and twenties. So what we're actually able to do as well is resize that using the old Z command. It's just a pro tip. So when you are using text box, using the old Z command allows you to resize any text box to match the words that are actually in it. So we can see here, we now type old Z again, and it will resize it to the exact size that we need. So now let's just add another couple of markups and we'll speed through here. I've actually sped this up quite a lot. So we don't spend all the time doing all the markups on this drawing sped up to 700 soon but as you can see when you are looking at it most of the time i'm not using the mouse very much i'm using a lot of those keyboard shortcuts to grab from from our tool chest so as you can see it essentially speeds up the design as much as possible and really gets us as efficient as we need to so when we are going to this and we finish our markup we can have a look at the bottom of the page you can, if we pull up the bottom of the blue beam you can see there is now a series of defined variables and if we click on them we can essentially flick through all the markups we have in this document what we can also then do is filter it even further so if we just want to look at the correction notes we type in correction in the bottom command and it allows us just to define those correction notes now if we go through the document we can see the only ones that are highlighted in this document are those correction commands there's no other markups specifically highlighted in here so we can quickly flick through to find where they are as you can see the other markups are grayed out. Further this, we can also create a PDF that lists all the markups we've got there. And because we've actually redefined that correction note, it'll only provide the correction notes in there. So we just go through and just filter out any of the status boxes that we don't need. So essentially customizing it for this document. And then by extracting it, we now have an extracted document. And as you can see here, it's just listed each of those markups. And if we set this up correctly, they do actually have hyperlinks, as you can see. So now let's have a look at that. We can go back, click those hyperlinks, and it jumps to where we need to. Let's try that again. Let's go to the back of the document. We'll click on one of the other hyperlinks. As you can see, it takes us to where you want to go. So again, if we wanted to filter out something else for this situation, we'll just filter out the alerts. And by filtering out the alerts, we now can only see the alerts on the document. So let's flick through that. We can see that now the alerts will be the highlighted markup as opposed to the correction, which was before. So we've essentially changed it. Now what we can do now is also then filter it out and get it back up to those hyperlinks. Now we have both amended to the document, the original one that we called up and the alerts. So we're able to customize the things that we see at the end. For those of you who don't know, we can also power this further through Sessions. Sessions allows us to upload our PDFs to an online repository, which then can be accessed by multiple people at the same time. So we can have multiple people working up on the same drawing at the same time. So we can have a couple of people working on different documents or different areas in the document or even on the exact same PDF. And we can provide these markups in real time back and forth to people. It also defines on who's actually done what markups. So if we want to go back and see who's actually doing the markups on our drawings, we'll actually see who's actually done these as well. And as per other PDF, you can see down the bottom here, we have all the markups listed down there. And further this, we can now also create replies back and forwards in this document. So the drafties had a look at what the engineers actually said to realign them. However, when he's looked at the architectural drawings, he's realized they cannot be realigned because the architect set it out in a specific location to match with the wall mullions. So just writing back, I'm not doing this because of the architectural set out. This is where the architect set out these rafters. Do you actually want to change it or do you want to leave them where they are? So now the engineer can come in and say, reply to that response as well. In this case situation, he didn't realize the set out was done by the architect. So just said, leave them where they are as a response back. So essentially closing out that RFI. And further this, you also have a status bar. As you can see up the top corner, we have a thing called status. And this status bar allows us to either set 
the changes. So we can either do it accept and it says what times it's been accepted and who's actually accepted it as well. This is really powerful for closing out your QA procedures as you can essentially close out all the RFIs you've got on this document this way. And now similar to what we did before, we can also create an amended PDF at the back of the document, which will also track all the changes as well. So if we just go back into the bottom, we define that PDF, we grab the PDF, and then we just make sure that we've got amend to PDF at the top corner, which I'm circling now. By having that checkbox, we press OK. It will add this at the end of the document with those defined links. So it allows us to have the hyperlinks as well. Now, if we scroll through this as well, we can also see the replies are in there. So we can see if there was any discussions had on this document and what the answers were. So as we can see, this can be really powerful, especially for teams working digitally, which is happening more and more nowadays. And it's likely to happen even more as we extend into the future. You can see by doing this, we can essentially power our markups even more effectively. So both by utilizing the tool chest, by moving them up into my tools as well, so we can get those shortcut keys and amending this at the back of the document. We can see we've got a really powerful QA procedure along with a quick and easy access guide to, so we can track the changes and look at what's happening. It allows multiple team members to work on it at once. And also when you have these marker procedures, you do not necessarily need to be focused in on what each of those markups are. As sometimes you have different markups for different purposes. So by looking at your marker procedure, you can essentially change it on a project by project basis. Essentially by creating a little legend off to the side, you can now have a marker procedure mean something else as you can change it to be effectively for what that markup is required for. So do not limit yourself by the marker procedure set by the company necessarily. By putting in these additional comments and legends, you can make it even more powerful and have it required for the specific markup that you're currently doing. So hopefully this has given you some insight to improve your markups, especially through Bluebeam. And if you do have any other additional tips, please comment below. As we are a community, we're all better together. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you've had made this a point, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. And to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.